Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our Gospel lesson, John 9. And Jesus passed by, and he saw a man blind from birth. Have you noticed our theme for today? It is sight and light. It's everywhere. In the gradual, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. In the intro, my eyes are ever on the Lord. Our Old Testament lesson, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Our epistle, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. And our gospel, the man born blind, healed by Jesus. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. You may think that this is all about how Jesus healed a blind man. But I believe the story is also about those who think they see, but are blind. And how often that applies to us. This is a story from 2005. Some of you have heard it before. Tina and Laura and I went to Laramie to see the kids who were all still in college. We had supper with them, had a great time that night. And then Laura stayed with her sisters for the night. Tina and I drove home for an evening together. Probably the first evening together alone in over a year. The thing is, when we were in Laramie, we bought an entertainment center, a place to put our TV. When, and when we got home, we made the mistake of opening the box. And that's when it happened. I went blind. The male side of my brain staged a coup. I had to put that entertainment center together. Yeah. It was already almost 9 p.m. This was crazy, but nothing would deny me it had to be put together. And at 12.30, we looked at the new entertainment center, a real thing of beauty. I was exhausted. The last half hour had not been very pretty. Tina and I had gotten grumpy and testy. I looked over at my wife slumped in the chair. And suddenly, I could see again. The evening together was over. There it was. Tina and I, nice glass of wine, talking and enjoying the moment, reflecting on the day, on the conversations we had with the kids, talking about life. We could have held each other and laughed and cried and gone to bed holding hands. But that was gone. Gone. Stolen from us by an entertainment center and a really dumb husband. A man who lost his sight. His ability to see what was really important. Time moves, always moves ahead, and time can never be recovered. Life comes at us at an incredible pace. One day it's just you and your wife, the next there's kids all over the place. The job, the expenses, the holidays, the birthdays, sports, vacations, house, cars, repairs, payments everywhere you look, and then suddenly the kids are grown up and your hair is turning gray or white. I'm hoping for white. Sometimes it feels like you miss something important. Some folks wake up to a world of lots of possessions and an empty, hollow feeling, a feeling of loss. For all their hard work, is this all there is? 
There's a great scene in the movie Megamind where Megamind has defeated his rival Metro Man and now he's in control and he can have anything he wants. But he finds that it's all empty. Megamind is talking to one of those drinking birds that, and he says, I know, funny, always thirsty, never satisfied. I understand you, little well-dressed bird, purposeless, emptiness. To have everything except fulfillment and purpose. It is a reflection of the curse of sin that we live under. While we are busy with the things in life, life itself passes right by us. Our Old Testament lesson, Isaiah says, You have seen many things, but have paid no attention. Your ears are open, but you hear nothing. All of the things in our life are blessings from God, gifts from Him. If we start to love the gifts more than the giver, we are in darkness. Blindness, just like I had on that Friday night. Blindness that looks but does not see that real life is passing us by. Paul, in our epistle, calls it darkness. My sinful nature pushes me further and further into this darkness, striving for satisfaction and accomplishments that often come at the cost of my relationships with God and with others. Like a man going further and further into the blackness of the cave, thinking all the time that the light is just ahead. When I get this done, then there will be time. But really, the light is growing dimmer and dimmer. We are in a world that wants to take our focus off of God and put it on us. To take our focus off of our kids and put it on what they can achieve. We're running a rat race And the rats are winning. The man born blind was just sitting there minding his own business when Jesus came along and turned his world upside down. He was healed. Now he could see. But the biggest change came when Jesus healed him the second time. When Jesus heard what had happened, he found the man and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. You have seen him, Jesus said, and he is speaking to you. Yes, Lord, I believe, the man said, and he worshipped Jesus. And the man born blind said, Yes, Lord, I believe. Now, not only could he see but he was alive in Christ. The darkness of our sin wants us to believe that the good life is only those times when things are going great. But then Jesus rubs spit and dirt into our eyes. He comes to us with things that do not look very powerful. He comes to us with water and word in baptism, bread and wine in the supper. A small group of people gathered around Christ and His promises. And God asks us to do things that are not always fun or easy. God wants us to do hard things. Things like standing against the culture like being kind, considerate, and yes, even polite to others when they are none of those things to us. The world through Jesus' eyes is a very different place. It is, in fact, a totally different place. A place where love, joy, and peace are more important than power, wealth, and comfort. 
a place where patience, kindness, and goodness are more important than ego, accomplishment, and success. A place where faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are more important than winning, fame, and popularity. Being found in Christ is like, well, the Apostle Paul says it's like waking up. Wake up, he says in our text, O sleeper, arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. It's like rising from the dead, moving from death into life, finding forgiveness from Christ for ourselves and for others. Life, life eternal, life in Christ, it's all a gift. It is all the grace of God. Grace that loves the unlovable, that accepts a sinner's into the family. It is a love that does not bar the door and remove our nameplate when we mess up, when we sin, when we rebel against God. Jesus did not come to condemn us, but to save us. Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Jesus brings sight to the blind, and that is often us. He helps us reset and see that life is too short to spend it all on things that are not eternal. O oh Lord Christ, give us sight to see everyone else the way you see them. Give us sight to see the opportunities for service and love all around us. Help us to see that serving others, loving our family, is so much better than just trying to get them to love us. Lord Jesus, help us to be content with all the gifts that you give us. Give us sight to see you as you are. Sight to see your suffering, your crucifixion, your resurrection. And sight to see ourselves as forgiven and healed sinners who are on the road to heaven because of your grace. Lord, we believe. And believing is seeing. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.